Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, let me talk a bit about my project. My, my PhD project is about spread mediumship in Northeast Thailand or Isan. So today's paper will, will be based on a chapter dealing with um, the relationship between um, state polities and uh, mediumistic practice. And I will read down my, my paper. <laughs> I try to put more uh, colors or make it more powerful by, OK. Okay. Um, in the heart of Tayipum city, the Payala monument stands prominently at the roundabout where two main roads meet. He is encircled by the buildings of the provincial bureaucracy, the city hall, police station, provincial court, cultural office, and schools. He turns his face southward to Bangkok as a sign of loyalty to the Thai monarchy and nation. The logic underlying this orientation shows the place of centralization and urbanization in Thai modern state building, whereby urban monuments such as these present allegiance to the Bangkok court. Payala's soaring monument functions as the Chayipum city pillar or Lak Mueang and is central to provincial power. According to BJ Towao, Lak Mueang represents provincial authority under modern Bangkok's affective control and also involves the religious practices connected to the local guardian spirit of attitude towards the seat of political power. According to the national history, Payala was a Laotian chief who led his group from Vientiane to migrate to the Kolat Plateau in early 19th century. He sought political refuge from the Bangkok court in the reigns of King Rama II and King Rama III. In the battle against an invading Laotian army led by Zhao Anu Wong, Payala was killed. His, cor his courageous act of defense was pressed. He is recognized as the first governor of Chayipum province and the local hero heroic figure. Nowadays, he has become the divine ruler in the local cosmology and the supreme deity in mediumistic practice. May I have my water? When I'm <coughs> so this paper examines the way in which the people's subjectivity is manufactured through ritual practice around Payala cult and the relationship between ritual practice from the margins and the state polities. It sees the way in which local people actively and creatively define themselves in relation to local and national religious political power. Ritual enactment around um, the deity enables the people to perceive their subjectivity under Thai sovereignty, where Payala is embodied into the histor historical imagination of the state. By looking at Thailand as a ritual state, state political order and the Isan peripheral religious power are mutually constitutive. The Mandala Thai power of the Thai charismatic state is perceived to radiate out from the center, but its charismatic potency and power are, rit uh, are ritually uh, maintained from the work done by the periphery. In religious world, Chayipun personhood is ritually constructed with the reference uh, of Payale. People consider themselves as subjects under his protection. A newborn, a newborn child is registered at birth, not only at the district office, but also at the God's shrine. Parents bring their children and make their presence known to him. When a mother gives birth to a child, her family members who associate themselves with a mediumistic network might go to see their master, like in the photos. They bring kanha, the, 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 the materiality representation of a personhood that I will uh, talk about more. They, they will bring kanha, uh, the, the bowl of five pairs of flowers and five pairs of candles as an offering to Payale and other spirits of the network. The master medium accepts the bowl and holds it in front of his, uh, her shrine. She prays to the god and asks him 
to wield his power to protect the newborn baby and accept it as his child. So Chayipum people will identify themselves as Luk uh, Payale, the children, the child of Payale, like Lan Yamu or Luk Lan Yamu in 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 Korat province. The master medium accepts the bow. Uh, she prays to the god and asks him to wield his power to protect him, the, the child. Chayipum person who is richly baptized, the subject of localized religiosity. A person lives through the course of their life with the underlying logic that life transitions and experiences have a firm connection to the god. Kanha is the material representation of not East personhood. It is the emerging person personal totem when that person is present in the ritual domain. On the one hand, the word Khan means bow, a metal water container that Thai people use in their everyday life. Ha is the number five. The way villagers create Khan Ha is various. The mediums and disciples skillfully put a pair of specific flowers and a pair of small candles together in five banana leaf cones inside the bowl. General people might roughly take five pairs of flowers and five pairs of candles to put in a bowl or a dish. By this way, it functions as the ritual prop, potentially as a gift, tribute, or totem that indicating the person's existence and participation in the ceremony. But on the other hand, the word khan, which is homophonous and present in Buddhist doctrinal knowledge, means aggregate or the combination referring to the way in which a person is metaphysically constituted. In Buddhist canonical texts, Kanha, or the aggregate, aggregate form by five elements, is the notion that a person is constituted by the composition of five elements, corporeality, feeling, perception, mental formations, and consciousness, or as we know that Kanha uh, is formed with uh, Isan villagers derive the philosophical notion of personhood from participating in monastery and create and understand it in the form of materiality in ritual domain. This interpretation of the Buddhist doctrine into material practice occurs whenever a religious ritual or rite of passage operates. For example, at the temple, when a man wishes to be ordained, he will offer kanha to the abbot at the symbol of asking to transfer his personhood into the monastery. Isan's people manifest personhood can be observed when it, becomes, when it becomes a central subject of ritual processes. It is represented in the material form of kanha and addressed in the medium singing, so um, when the medium heals and or um, sings, they, we will we will have a lot of in the relics. We will have the the terms kanha in the songs, and 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 it is the subject of being healed, being healed in the ritual. And kanha is identified with the symptoms and remedy in healing ritual, and it is revitalized in soul calling rite. In Buddhist holy day, one seen one pra, elder villagers bring their kanha to the temple where they stay overnight and practice Buddhist precepts. One spirit medium told me that this performance of the material prop in monastery signifies that the attendants dedicate themselves. So he told me in the terms, Mop Gai Tawai Shivit, Mop Gai Tawai Sivit, to Buddhism. It resonates with the way parents offer kanha which is the representation of their newborn child to Payale at his shrine. And it also echoes the practice when disciples in mediumistic networks carry their kanha to their master's houses on the occasion of annual shrine worship. The masters accept kanha, then pray, and then put them on their shrines as the resubmission to the membership of the network and the protection of the possessing spirits of the shrine. It should be noted here that the submission of me, uh, membership in Chayipum 
mediumistic uh, work um, network would automatically register that person under Payala's regime because all spirit networks in the Shayapum province are within the pantheon where the deity presides over. It is his principality with hierarchical mandala, uh, mandala form of feudalistic polity. Moreover, it should be emphasized that one person is not obligated to rely on a single power. In the evening before the Buddhist holy day, disciples will gather at, the master, at their master medium's house and offer kanha to the shrine. Then at night, they will pick up another kanha to the local temple and sleep there. In their religious world, spirit shrine and monastery are the two territories they can concurrently devote to and rely on. This religious practice illuminates, uh, from my idea, 19th century Southeast Asia polity before the emergence of modern state formation, that one chiefdom locating on the peripheral satellites of two kingdoms might seek protection from both powers. We already learned that pre-modern chiefdoms in the Northeast region, including Payala's story, simultaneously paid tributes to both Bangkok court and Vientiane court. The present religious practice exposes the pre-modern form of power relations. The Northeast body is the replica replication of pre-modern chiefdom in Mandala multi-concentric power system. Northeast personhood could be well maintained with the equilibrium by paying tributes in the material representation of Kanha to mediumship, the mark of regional identity, and to Buddhism, the religion of the state whose political economic power gives rise to the modern Northeast identity. The image of Payala is reproduced in the public domain through intensive celebrations arranged by the provincial organizations in every part of Thailand, similar seasonal celebrations are held in remembrance of local heroic figures. In such events, the past is made present and is re-enchanted through spectacles and performance. The spectacular performance of social memory and historical commemoration constitutes their present identity. Ritual enactment, where we see what the informants do, hear what they sing and speak, and learn what they experience would be a crucial lens to understand the construction of Chayipum personhood. Also, this subject formation in ritual is crucial for understanding Isan personhood as the identity politics distinct from and at the same time assimilated into the nation identity. At the shrine of Payale or the other events of the pilgrimage sites, one of the dancing tributes that may many mediums perform is to imitate warrior actions. They held one or two swords in their hands and wielded their, them in the air. They put a sword on their heads and maintained a balance while closing their eyes and dancing. Long cords were worn around their body at the hip or the head to depict warrior uniform. The use of sword as a prop in mediumistic practice we can see in, in other parts of Thailand like the North and North East. The performance sends the message to the spirits that these mediums committed themselves as the loyal servants to superhuman beings. They play the role as warriors to protect and indicate the existence of Payales and local spirit sovereignty. The magical image of Payala is reproduced in, var in various iconic forms and disseminated into everyday life in the context of the market-oriented economy. In the household, people put his picture on the wall under portraits of the time monarchs. Spirit, mo spirit, spirit mediums place his sculpture next to the Buddha images on their shrines. Monks make amulets in his image in temples for distribution to the occult market Traders sell his pictures. Drivers imprint his figure on their cars. Payala's image as hero and divine governor 
is embedded in social life and the religious world. His, chariz his charismatic power within Chayapum is manufactured in the way similar to how the potency and sovereignty of the wider symbolic, of the symbolic order of the nation, religion, and monarchy is reproduced. Many scholars observe how the persistence and intensification of the Thai monarchy is implicated in processes of nation building. By expanding the notion of theater state by Clifford Geertz, they examine Thailand as a performative state where the monarch is represented as the demigod god king or Thewa Racha by the mass media and the public social events like Peter argued in his paper. paper. Peter Skilling describes social and political orders in state polities where ritual and ritual status is evident as ritual states and argues that ritual was crucial to the political operations of the states that evolved within and beyond the boundaries of modern Thailand. Such divine image is made possible through performance which, take, which place the, the, the king at the pinnacle at religious and national ritual hierarchies. In a similar way, whenever Chayipum people organize provincial rituals, Payala is rich, uh, respectfully addressed and invited to preside over. In medium mystic pantheons, he sits at the apex of the hierarchical structure when spirit mediums conduct rituals, they notify him, sometimes call him to process them. While the monarchy's political legitimation is mediated through everyday mass media and public rituals in Thai society, Payala's enchantment is reproduced through local celebrations, social events, and mediumistic ritual. This imitation of kingship, together with his placement in national and local history, establishes Payala's supremacy in Chayapum's religious world. However, I suggest this imitation does not mean that Payala's power solely relies on that of the monarchy as in one-way flow. Rather, the relationship between national kingship and local lordship is one of reciprocity, whereby the monarchy, too, gains meaning and potency by virtue of its similitude in the local eyes to the charismatic lord. Thai ascendant kingship is verified and reassuring as long as there exists a symbolic resonance between locally experienced charismatic power and that of the nation, both of which are performed and sustain each other in the Mandala formation. The origin of Payala in Chayapum cosmology is told by uh, a medium in the fashion of military journey and territorialization of spiritual, one female medium told me that when Payale came over to Chayapum, he dropped his soldiers over the landscape. They have become the guardians of the forest and fields since then. This military, this military come ecological metaphor, suggestive of um, spiritual reign, offers a specific cosmological notion of fertility and provides a version of genesis of the local spirit pantheon. However, her intriguing explanation possibly suggests political dynamics of the state formation in Northeast, where villagers have encountered a multitude of imposed authorities since the distant past. In the colonial period in 19th century, Isan was, Isan was the conflict region of Thai and French powers. Later in 20th century, in an era of neocolonialism, it, become, it became a U.S. military base against the Lao Vietnamese Communist Movement in mainland Southeast Asia. The idioms of colonization are imprinted in the village historical consciousness in their religious world. There had been pre-existing spirits of the region before the arrival of Payale, but once the god and his army arrived, he chronized the scattering of the spirits and put them in administrative order. Chayipum spirits are beholden to Payala's new regime as his citizens and soldiers. At his trial, 
Payala is portrayed as a traditional warrior sitting in his throne and watching the flow of people commemorate, it, commemorate and pay homage to him. At the monument, he stands in front of the provincial hall. He does not hold a sword, but a book in his left hand. The god is dressed in traditional official uniform, represented as the intellectual governor. The two avatars of Payale constitute the pose of the sovereign transformation which com commences with his, begins with his legendary military actions to defend, the national, to defend national territory, followed by the act of establishing with his bureaucratic organization over local society. Thais have become accustomed to manifold features of the charismatic rural, such as the way in which Thai monarchs depiction as Buddhist king or Tamaracha intertwines the rural with notions of Buddhist merit. A wealthy Chinese man told me that Payala does not make war, but he sustains wisdom. He said, the god holds the book, not the sword. It represents him as the governor more than soldier. Some local people read him as the image of wisdom. He emphasized, we as the Chinese have been taught by our parents that we must focus on our study like Payale, Payale which represents wisdom. Payale's identity encompasses warrior and intellectual governor in a society with a, with a multi-ethnic makeup of Taiyupum province. The Chinese associate themselves with the avatar that is responsive to their identity as the middle class in Taiyupum's urban world. In conclusion, uh, I would argue or suggest that the Isan ritual enactment around spirit mediumship or other kind of supernaturalism is not backward and nonsensical as potentially seen from the bureaucratic point of view or mainstream society, but it is a spectacular anachronism, suggestive of Mandela-type relationships or feudalistic performance that maintains the or oratic power of the nation and the charismatic potency of the monarchy in Thai modern state, which is I would like to call the ritual state. Thank you.